Hello, good morning, and welcome to my talk about the highlights from the ninth annual European CME Forum. My name is Eugene Posniak. Uh, here is my disclosure slide. I am Programme Director and Guarantor of the European CME Forum, which is a not-for-profit organisation that's dedicated to bringing together all stakeholder groups with an interest in CME in Europe. I'm also Managing Director and CEO of CME Learning. We're an independent medical education provider based in Manchester and we're the first non-US ACCME accredited provider. I have no relevant financial disclosures to make and I should highlight that both CME Learning and European CME Forum work in collaborative partnerships with other organisations, medical societies, universities to develop independent education and where we do receive funding from industry it's always on an arm's length basis. So when it comes to talking about this meeting, um, this is very much a personal overview that I want to give you. We're going to be generating reports, other people are going to be writing um, their own opinions of this, but it's, uh, I'm really taking this opportunity to just give you some personal highlights uh, from the meeting. Um, I'll talk about the meeting approach and structure. Obviously as programme director, I would put the meeting together myself, and, um, but we'll look at the, the kind of new messages that came out of the meeting and the developments by our four key stakeholder groups that uh, we have attending the meeting. And finally, sort of the lessons learned and the next steps, i.e. where the next meeting is taking place. So, the ninth annual meeting, or 9ECF as we call it for short, took place in Amsterdam, 9th to the 11th of November. And we did it this year for the first time in collaboration, and we did it with the European Union of Medical Specialists, UEMS, and they ran their full day meeting on the Saturday. So when it came to the planning for the meeting, in good CME spirit, we developed the uh, needs assessment. We actually evaluate what previous um, participants um, have fed back to us. We look at the feedback, the emails that we received over the years, kind of communications. We also look at the developments over the previous year, what's happening in Europe, but also the rest of the world, especially North America, but now we're looking at other places as well. We talk constantly to our expert faculty, the session chairs, uh, who input very valuably um, over the development process, and we do actually run a formal needs assessment as well. This is done by means of a survey monkey, and we've been doing this year on year now. I'm just going to put up a couple of slides uh, showing the kind of results that we drew on for planning this year. And, and that there is, this, there is a trend over the nine meetings that we've had now that people actually want practical guidance. So if you look at the top things, four things here. So these are asking uh, people working in CME, what are the topics that are of importance to you? It's important for people to know how to measure outcomes of CME activities, how CME can affect clinical practice, what is high quality execution in CME, how to carry out a good needs assessment. And another question we asked, we run these forum workshops, which I'll, which I'll talk about in a moment, but as in actual hands-on practical small workshops, what do people want to uh, know about. They want to know how CME can change clinical practice. What is the evidence that shows the CME is effective? You can see there's a theme that, that goes through. Then the second thing when it comes to a planning a meeting is the educational format. How are you actually going to deliver this? And what we found over the years that people do like this balance between presentations, the didactic lectures, panel discussions, extended Q&A sessions, and these large and small workshops. So when it came to structuring the meeting over the 48 hours or so, our meeting is orange. We chose the color because it was Amsterdam. We started sort of Wednesday lunchtime. For the rest of Wednesday, we had full room plenary sessions. Most of Thursday, we broke off into the small workshops. Friday, we were back into the plenary sessions. And on the Friday afternoon, you'll see in, in green there, we ran a number of parallel seminars for each of the f what we consider our four key stakeholder groups. And then on the Saturday, the UEMS meeting took place. And the idea was we usually have these, the seminar sessions, these green sessions, 
uh, in previous meetings, if you're familiar with European CME Forum meetings, we have like these day zero meetings, meetings for these stakeholder groups, which are usually invitation only, that take place before the meeting. This year, we put them after the after 9ECF, so that delegates from the UEMS meeting were also free to attend their relevant specialist seminar. So these were very well attended this year, and um, and the four meetings themselves. As I said, we moved from day zero to specialty seminars. The four sessions were run by um, a number of key organizations uh, for that specific group. So for industry, we had the International Pharmaceutical Alliance for CME, IPACME, which is a collection of drug companies with individuals with specific responsibilities for CME who get together. They have very regular meetings. They ran a session for people from industry. The medical societies and associations was hosted by JECME, our Journal of European CME. So Professor Robin Stevenson, the editor-in-chief, chaired a meeting for the medical society delegates. The accreditors, many of whom are members of this organization, but their session was run by the International Academy for CPD Accreditation, a global organization bringing together the accreditors. And for the providers, it was run by the Good CME Practice Group. The plenary sessions themselves, I mean, we were very fortunate this year. We really had the global leaders uh, from CME, whether it's in education, industry, or the accreditation bodies. Um, we had whole room interactive discussion and Q&A, and th there were a number of presentations actually showcasing breast practice examples. But what I'll do now is actually talk about um, the specific topics and the messages that came out. So from the feedback that we had, we had some practical guidance um, sessions in the forum workshops. Um, we looked at how CME activities can be evaluated to actually determine whether they meet their objectives and they're making uh, uh, any kind of um, impact. How to do CME effectively. These four pillars of CME were presented by the Good CME Practice Group. The GCMEP group uh, ran two sessions, and um, one was talking about uh, doing CME effectively, and the other one was navigating compliance challenges. Compliance is becoming a huge topic now for providers. How to actually develop education in a compliant way, how to look for funding in a compliant way, how to spend money in a compliant way, how to develop and uh, present and evaluate education in a compliant way as well. So this was um, a hot topic uh, for, for us this year. Another topic that is really coming to the fore is interprofessional continuing education, IPCE. So this is not multidisciplinary, this is actually getting the different professions within the healthcare uh, con uh, treat treatment groups together to develop education. How do you get the nurses together with the physiotherapists together with the doctors to develop education where uh, high quality, um, quality improvement education is developed for a target audience. So that was led by the American Nurses Credentialing Center. And from last year to this year, we're finding a massive increase in uh, the patient voice. How do we as educators listen to the patient voice and incorporate them in our planning of educational activities? And we had uh, two sets of uh, patient advocacy groups, one from Lupus Europe and a session from by the European Parkinson's Disease Association. And there was a fantastic session run on patient-centered outcomes-based planning, which really excited the people in the room, where the chairman actually sat with a patient and a carer from the EPDA and demonstrated to the room in a workshop setting how in one and a half hours you can develop high quality targeted education starting from the voice of the patient. So looking at the stakeholder groups, the four groups, what, did, what were the kind of updates and messages we saw from them? When it comes to the medical societies and associations, and we have a whole host of, of them turning up. Um, but what we found this year is that several of them are actually seeing that they are experiencing shared challenges. They're all in the same boat. 
they all have a membership, they all develop education, but they're now talking to each other much more about what, yeah, what their shared experiences are. And that was, that was lovely to see this year in, in, in really coming into, into the fore. I just want to highlight one thing. The International Council of Ophthalmology, even though not a specific European medical society, however, it's still a large association with, with a membership, but they were very happy to present the ICO Guide to Effective CPD CME, a document, quite a substantial document, about what a medical society thinks of CME and how it should be developed and delivered for a specialist membership. So they presented this and it really sparked off some fantastic discussion amongst the, all the medical societies saying, well, actually, this really encapsulates all our challenges. Let's take this forward in some way. So uh, under Robin Stevenson and Jack Me, um, we're looking to try and develop some kind of dialogue and allow to, and to facilitate this, certainly between now and next year. From the accreditors' perspective, and UEMS had their meeting, they're launching EACME 2.0, an updated version of their accreditation standards. So that comes into force from the 1st of January 2017. You can go to eacme.eu, download the new standards. Essentially, they're asking for a bit more information, a bit more evaluation, they're shortening the review time, and they're trying to revamp the accreditation standards um, of EACME. We heard how EBAC is looking to accredit micro e-learning. So we're looking at different types of education now being accredited, especially seeing what goes on in the States, you know, trying to introduce a bit more flexibility when it comes to accreditation of educational activities in Europe. And we heard that a ACCME is also accrediting non-US providers. Now, there's still you can see that there's factionalization. Actually, over the past year in 2016, UEMS and EBAC have split. There's not necessarily um, a huge amount of harmonization that's going on as each group is, is working on their own standards and things. But especially under the International Academy, we are seeing that there is a trend towards common quality standards. They are talking to each other. They are trying to come up with a set of principles that accreditation bodies should follow. Industry. Now, we've got members of IPACME and FPIA who came together to give a workshop, again, a one and a half hour workshop. For the first time, we're seeing in Europe that industry have come together across the different companies to actually present a shared vision for medical education in Europe, or the funding of medical education in Europe. We also had representation from MedTech Europe, the regulators for the devices and diagnostics um, companies. So they were, they were also in the room and at the, at the meeting giving presentations elsewhere. So having a real cross-section from industry was, was very interesting. And, and this one slide that they presented was particularly exciting. For the first time, we have guidance in Europe on how industry should be supporting medical education. And you have these four lozenges. The lozenge on the right, the blue one, is quite clear what this is. This is promotion. This is drug promotion, how to use the drug company's product properly. So whether it's through hardcore advertising or hands-on workshops, that's medical education that industry provides for their prescribers on how to use their product, promotion. On the far left, there is a lozenge for collaborative partnerships. So when they're working as parity partners with other organizations on an initiative of some kind, there is a way of industry supporting um, the medical education in that field. But from a CME perspective, what's interesting is what's in the middle, the orange and the gray lozenges. And this has caused a huge amount of confusion right from the time I started in CME in 2000. So I've been waiting a long time for this. At the bottom, we've got company-initiated professional development or medical disease programs. So these are the kind of genuinely sort of independent, could be unbiased programs, but they are company-initiated. They're saying, actually, if industry is, is initiating this, developing it, approving it, However independent it may be, the, med the educational content may be, they're recognizing that it's still controlled by the company. And what we see split out is a definition for independent medical education. 
and we're hearing now independent medical education means education that's been initiated, developed and presented by a third party. They may be funding it, but they're not controlling it. They're not dictating what the content is. They're not approving it. They're not reviewing it. They're not helping the faculty in any way or anything. And it's this split which, which we've been, in effect, we've been waiting for a long time in Europe to have this definition uh, clarified. So um, the IPACME members who are involved in this are talking to FPIA, and FPIA are looking at how to incorporate these messages into the code, what is acceptable for the overall membership. So this is a, a one to watch over the next year or two. Then providers. And we saw here a more confident voice at the meeting. Providers are looking for a clarity in their role and purpose. And we can see the academic providers and the professional providers actually identifying that they have shared challenges. So the academic providers, like the medical societies, like hospital departments, they're the people who also are looking for industry funding, or they're also doing needs assessment and developing education. So they're really sitting with the professional providers in how they develop education. And it was good to see at the meeting how, how this is actually um, coming along. But this group is looking for guidance on how to develop high quality education. And that's really the thrust of what we're really seeing at the ninth meeting, and nine ECF, is that people want to know how to do high quality education, how to be compliant, how to actually um, develop good quality education that affects physician performance and ultimately patient outcomes. And the providers we could see were also seeking recognition of their function in CME. And this was really important also in the Saturday meeting with UEMS. The providers as a group actually play a very important role when it comes to developing and presenting CME programs. So th this group is now getting more clearly defined. Uh, there's a clearer voice that's been coming out. And actually, just to put things into context, because over the years, it's been possible for medical communications agencies to be involved in CME in Europe. Really, with these providers being defined, there is this clarity that medical education agencies actually would be, if I go back to the previous slide that IPACME developed, medical education agencies are the ones who are developing the company-driven product-specific education programs and the company-initiated medical disease programs. But when it comes to independent medical education, that really are, is the domain of the CME provider. <clears throat> so from the evaluations that we ran, we ran evaluations on the day itself and then a survey after the meeting as well. We're analysing um, this at the, mo at the moment. Overall, most of the people were happy most of the time, which was great to see. But here, there was, there was much more sort of, it felt there was more action coming from the meeting. There was, people wanted to talk more. They're saying, we need to talk to other groups. We need to understand how uh, the other stakeholder groups may, may work. They want to be more inclusive. There's a lot of talk about involving the patient voice, negotiating with accreditation bodies, um, working with the healthcare professionals much more. And when it comes to this call for more clarity of rules, roles, purposes, you know, with the last two stakeholder groups that we talked about with industry, separating out independent medical education from the company initiated, and the role of the providers, then asking the accreditation bodies, please recognize this. We really need clarity in the rules so that we don't have drug company run program activities still accredited by the accreditation bodies. It still goes on today. But we need this dialogue to ensure that this doesn't happen. And for the medical societies, to, they are willingly to looking for wider collaborations, understanding what else is happening in Europe. And the clear thing that comes back with the forum workshops and what's going to cause us a little bit of a headache for next year is that there really is a thirst for this guidance on how to develop high quality and effective education. And how are we going to have more workshops, more interactivity, and find the experts as well who are well versed in this in order to run these workshops. So this is a, a really interesting challenge that we'll have for next year. Everything we do as European CME Forum is documented and published. You, you can access the activities through two ways. One is through the European CME Forum website. And the other way is going directly to JECME, um, the journal at jecme.eu. 
It's all open access and uh, like the row of icons you see at the bottom, right from the first meeting, you can download the presentations, see what we've done over the years, as well as what happened at, at 9ECF. So coming to the next meeting, 10 ECF will take place 8th to the 10th of November 2017 in Dublin. We're doing the meeting in collaboration with the Royal College of Physicians of Ireland. We're working on the agenda right now and, and on a number of other activities. So we're always willing to hear any feedback from anyone in the community. Do please get in touch. Thank you for your time.